I bet you've never thought about how empty everything really is. Yeah, I'm talking about that chair you're sitting on, the floor beneath your feet, even your own body. Crazy, right? But here's the mind-blowing truth. Everything we think of as solid is mostly nothing. Let's zoom in, weigh in, past the surface of any object, past the molecules, right down to the atoms. What do we see? A tiny nucleus surrounded by electrons with a whole lot of empty space in between. It's like a miniature solar system, but instead of planets, we've got electrons zooming around in a vast emptiness. Now you might be wondering, if everything's so empty, why don't I fall through my chair? Well, that's where the real magic happens. It's all about forces, especially the electromagnetic force, creating an illusion of solidity. Think of it like a massive cathedral made of super thin, invisible threads. Sounds impossible, right? But those threads, the forces between atoms are what give us our solid world. Our perception of the world is built on the assumption that it's made of solid, dense matter. We can knock on a door, sit on a chair, and feel the weight of objects in our hands. But if we peer deeper, down to the atomic scale, we discover a paradox. The fundamental units of matter, atoms, are almost entirely empty space. At the core of each atom is a dense nucleus, surrounded by a vast region where tiny electrons are found. However, this electron region, the electron cloud, accounts for almost all of the atom's volume, leaving the nucleus as a minuscule fraction of the total size. This means that the majority of what we think of as solid is in fact void. Let's look at a seemingly solid object, a metal spoon. The spoon feels firm and unyielding, but the atoms making up the spoon are mostly empty space. If you could zoom into the atomic level, you would see tiny, dense nuclei surrounded by vast electron clouds. The spoon's solidity comes not from tightly packed material, but from interactions between these electron clouds. Imagine a city with tall skyscrapers. From a bird's eye view, the city looks dense and impenetrable. But when you're on the ground, you notice large open spaces, streets, parks, and plazas. The buildings, nuclei, are small compared to the total city area, the atom. Our world, much like this city, is built on the illusion of density when most of it is empty space. Atoms consist of two distinct regions, the nucleus and the electron cloud. The nucleus, located at the centre of the atom, contains protons and neutrons. Protons are positively charged, while neutrons carry no charge. This nucleus is extremely dense, housing almost all of the atom's mass in a space that's incredibly small. Surrounding the nucleus is the electron cloud, where negatively charged electrons move. However, electrons don't orbit the nucleus in neat, fixed paths like planets around the Sun. Instead, they exist in regions of probability called orbitals, defined by quantum mechanics. Heil. These orbitals show where an electron is likely to be found at any given time. In a helium atom, the nucleus contains two protons and two neutrons. The electrons exist in a spherical cloud around this nucleus. While the nucleus is tiny, the electron cloud defines the atom's overall size, making the atom appear much larger than the space occupied by its nucleus. Picture a lighthouse on a foggy night. The light from the lighthouse, nucleus, shines outward, illuminating the fog, electron cloud. The dense, tiny lighthouse represents the nucleus, while the vast fog represents the electron cloud, spreading out and defining the boundaries of the system. The size of the nucleus compared to the entire atom is mind-boggling. The nucleus, despite holding nearly all the atom's mass, is minuscule compared to the atom's total size. If the nucleus was scaled up to the size of a marble, the overall atom would stretch across a stadium. 
this disproportionate size difference highlights the immense amount of empty space within atoms. Let's consider a hydrogen atom. Its nucleus, a single proton, has a diameter of about 1 femtometer, 10 to 15 meters, while the entire atom has a diameter of approximately 0.1 nanometers, 10 to 10 meters. That's a size ratio of 1, 100,000. If the nucleus were the size of a golf ball, the atom would have a diameter spanning about 10 kilometers. Imagine a flea sitting on a large ferris wheel. The flea represents the nucleus, and the ferris wheel represents the atom. Although the flea is the heaviest part, the ferris wheel's vast structure, mostly made of empty space, defines its full size. Electrons, despite being incredibly small and lightweight, are found at surprisingly large distances from the nucleus. This vast separation between the nucleus and the electron cloud creates a sense of scale that's difficult to comprehend. The space between the nucleus and electrons is not empty in the classical sense. It's filled with the potential for electromagnetic interactions, but it's void of any solid matter. In a hydrogen atom, the single electron is found, on average, about 50,000 times farther from the nucleus than the nucleus's own diameter. If the nucleus were a small bead, the electron would be orbiting in a zone several football fields away. Picture a lone firefly, electron, circling a street lamp, nucleus, in an enormous dark field. The firefly's path is vast, leaving most of the field untouched. Similarly, the electron cloud occupies a huge volume compared to the tiny nucleus it surrounds. If atoms are mostly empty, why don't we pass through solid objects? The answer lies in the electromagnetic force. The negatively charged electrons in the atoms of your hand repel the negatively charged electrons in the atoms of the object you touch. This repulsion creates a barrier that prevents the atoms from physically touching, giving rise to the sensation of solidity. When you sit on a chair, the atoms in your body never come into direct contact with the atoms in the chair. Instead, the repulsion between electron clouds prevents your atoms from sinking into the chair supporting your weight and making the chair feel solid. Think of trying to push two strong magnets together with the same poles facing each other. The invisible force pushing them apart is similar to the repulsion between electron clouds. No matter how much you push, the magnets won't touch, just as your atoms never truly touch the atoms of any object. Quantum mechanics provides the framework for understanding why atoms don't collapse under the attractive forces between the positively charged nucleus and negatively charged electrons. Electrons occupy specific energy levels, or orbitals, which are governed by quantum rules. These rules prevent electrons from spiralling into the nucleus maintaining the stability of the atom. In a hydrogen atom, the single electron exists in the lowest energy orbital, forming a stable structure. If classical physics governed electron behaviour, this electron would lose energy and crash into the nucleus, collapsing the atom. However, quantum mechanics prevents this by enforcing discrete energy states. Think of electrons as runners on a track. They are allowed to occupy specific lanes, energy levels, but cannot run in between them. Quantum mechanics ensures that they stay in their designated lanes, preserving the atom's structure, despite the nucleus being incredibly small 
it contains almost all of an atom's mass. Protons and neutrons, which are much heavier than electrons, reside in the nucleus. Electrons, though essential for chemical interactions, contribute negligibly to the atom's mass. A carbon atom with six protons and six neutrons in its nucleus has nearly all of its mass concentrated in this tiny core. The six surrounding electrons, while important for bonding and reactions, add virtually no mass. Imagine a large helium balloon. Most of its weight comes from a small metal weight tied to it, the nucleus, while the helium gas, the electron cloud, gives it shape but contributes almost nothing to its mass. The vast empty space within atoms plays a crucial role in determining the properties of materials. This emptiness allows for flexibility in atomic arrangements, affecting how materials conduct electricity, withstand forces, or interact with light. On a cosmic scale, the structure of the universe mirrors this atomic emptiness, with celestial bodies separated by immense voids. The malleability of metals like gold arises from the arrangement of their atoms and the space between them. This atomic flexibility allows metal atoms to slide past each other without breaking the material. Think of a sponge. Despite being mostly air, its structure makes it strong and absorbent. Similarly, atomic structures rely on the balance of empty space and connectivity to create materials with diverse properties. Just as atoms are mostly empty space, the universe is filled with vast distances between stars and galaxies. Even in dense regions like galaxies, the actual amount of matter is minuscule compared to the empty space surrounding it. The Milky Way contains billions of stars, but the average distance between stars is about five light years. This means that even densely packed galaxies are mostly empty space. Imagine a vast desert dotted with a few isolated cacti. The cacti represent stars, while the surrounding emptiness mirrors the vast stretches of space between them. The discovery that everything solid is mostly empty space challenges our understanding of reality. Solidity, touch and mass are emergent properties resulting from atomic interactions rather than direct physical contact. Ancient philosophers like Democritus pondered the nature of matter and proposed the idea of indivisible units. Modern physics shows that these units, atoms, are not solid but mostly empty, governed by forces and probabilities. Reality is like a hologram. What appears to be a three-dimensional object is actually an illusion created by patterns of light. Similarly, the solidity we perceive is an emergent phenomenon arising from atomic interactions. Our world, from the smallest atom to the vastness of the universe, is a masterpiece of balance between emptiness and interaction. Despite the overwhelming emptiness within atoms, their intricate dance of forces gives rise to the complex, tangible reality we experience. It's a humbling reminder that even in near nothingness, everything can emerge.